Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. A few videos back, I did some speed tests on a Raspberry Pi 3, and following that, many people have asked me, is there a danger of Raspberry Pi 3 overheating, given it's got a relatively powerful new processor? So, in this video, I'm going to do some CPU temperature tests on a Raspberry Pi 3, and I'm also going to fit a heatsink. Right, here we are on the Raspbian desktop in what's going to be a very terminal intensive movie. So I'm going to run up the terminal. Here it is, as usual, I've got the fonts nice and big so you can see them. And to measure the temperature on a Raspberry Pi, we can type in the command vcgen cmd measure temp. And if we press enter on that, you will see we've got a temperature of 47.2 degrees centigrade. The Pi has been sitting here idling along with its case off for about an hour, so that's a good idle temperature. And to give you an idea, the room is at, what, 23.5 as an ambient, so we're running at about 24 degrees above ambient. And to be honest, a temperature even in the sort of higher 40s for, for idling along with a PC with its case off, I think, is, is a little bit high. Anyway, what we're going to do here is initially to run some tests to see how hot the Pi gets when we play video which is not necessarily intensely CPU intensive, but it is very GPU intensive, and our GPU and CPU are on the same chip, or our system on a chip on the Pi. So to test this out, I've actually produced some test files. So if I go to um, tests, yes, I put my directory called tests, and uh, you'll see here I've got two movies. One is five seconds long, one is two minutes long. We'll set things up with a five second one, and then we'll run the longer file. Now, to run a movie, to play a movie from a terminal, you simply type OMX player and the name of the movie. So I'll run the five sex dot marv and enter. And that'll play the movie, it'll come up. This is a movie, both of these movies got a data rate about sort of 40 or 50 megabit. And as you can see here, that was a 1920, 1080 movie. If I go back to my keyboard, I press the up arrow, the up cursor there, I can find the temperature again and press enter to re-execute that command, you'll see it's now at 46.2. It's got a bit cooler. I don't necessarily believe that. I think it just means the temperature tensor on the Pi is not that accurate. Small changes we shouldn't be too conscious of. Anyway, what I'm going to do here is now go to menu. Stay with me a little bit, please. And I'll go to accessories and I'm going to run up the text editor. Yes, I can run a text editor, say like nano in the terminal, but I think it's easier to see if I run it here on the desktop um, as I am doing. Now what I'm going to do is to write a bash script. And to do that, I have to tell it it's a bash script. So I put in the hash, exclamation, and uh, bin bash like that. And then I'm going to put in our command for uh, measuring temperature, vcgen cmd measure temp. I'm going to play our movie, omx player, and it's going to be our um, five sex Mov, and I'll also just take a copy of this, do a copy there, just press Control C on the keyboard, Control V, put it back. There is our little script. And if I save that script, save as, we'll stick it in tests, I'll call it, I don't know, I'll be really boring, call it test sh, test script, and save. I can now go back here, if I do a dir, you'll see it's there. And I now have to make that script executable. I have to change its properties so it can actually be run as a command. So I type ch mod space plus x space name of the script, which is test sh, like that. Seems to have worked. And if I now execute the script, dot forward slash script name, which is test sh, enter. It'll take a temperature measurement, play the video. This is why I've got a five second video for setting things up. And then it'll take the temperature again. You can see it did that and did that. That worked perfectly well. Having said that, I don't like all this mess in the middle. So if I go back here, I'm going to edit the command for playing the film. And on the end of it, put space inequality space dev null space two greater than and one. And I'll save this again. It'll keep its settings. So if I re-execute that script, there we are. It'll do the temperature, play the movie. 
Oh, we're getting used to the traction engine, isn't it lovely? Shot that years ago. And as you can see, it's taken one temperature reading and taken the other one. So now to set up our longer test, all I need to do is to change the movie to be two mins. Hopefully you've now got the logic of what I'm doing. I will take a copy of that. Uh, I'll do it by that. You can see what I'm doing. Edit and copy. And I'll go down here, control V, one, two, three, four, five. So what this will do is to play the movie five times, taking measurements before and after. This is a 10 minute test. So if I now go to uh, file and save, go back here, I'll be neat and clear the screen first. And now I'll run our script, which is still there and enter. It'll take a measurement and start playing the longer movie. You'll see what happens after five seconds and it just continues doing what it's doing. Although there are other shots later on. Anyway, I'm obviously not gonna play through 10 whole minutes in real time. So what I'll allow to happen now is this thing to play through, speed it up, and then we'll see what's happened to the temperature across 10 minutes. So here we are back in real time, almost at the end of the final video pass. And there we are, it's finished. As you can see, we've got our set of temperature readings across our 10 minute period. And what this basically shows us is there isn't a lot of difference. I would suggest the differences between these temperatures are within the actual variability of the sensor itself. The maximum temperature we've reached is 49.4. So the Pi is running at just over 25 degrees above ambient playing back video. And I think if I'd done a longer test, sort of 20 minutes, half an hour, two hours, 12 days, whatever, it wouldn't have made a lot of difference. So if you're going to use your Pi 3 to play video and you're concerned about temperatures, I would suggest don't worry. Even if we put a case on here, we probably wouldn't add more than about 10, 12, maybe 15 degrees. So it'd be perfectly safe to use a Pi just as you get it for playing video for long periods. Right, let's see if we can max out the Pi's processor and see the effect on temperature. And to do that, I'm gonna use a suite of benchmarking tools called Sysbench. To get that, you type sudo apt get install sysbench. I've already run that command, but if I hadn't, I'd have to do that to run what I'm about to run. So I just thought I'd show you what the command is to get the tools. Anyway, I don't need to do that, so I'll just go straight to typing sysbench. And now it's a very long syntax for the test. Test is a CPU test. And um, it's gonna be CPU max prime equal 20. In other words, it's going to factor prime numbers up to the figure 20,000. This is a quad-core processor, so we have to tell it it's going to be num threads equal four, or we wouldn't max out the processor, and we would have to run that. And if I've got the syntax right, which I seem to have, it'll start running that test. Now, as it starts to do so, I'll just let you know that in theory, the BCM2387 system on a chip on the Pi 3 has been tested to 125 degrees centigrade, but no one in their right mind would want to run a chip up to 125 centigrade. It has an official operational limit of 85 degrees centigrade, which is also very, very hot. And in theory, the Pi 3 will start to throttle itself, start to slow itself down to stop itself being damaged at 82 degrees centigrade. But to be honest, I wouldn't want to see a processor of mine running anywhere out of the 70s, to be honest. And for a standard sort of Intel CPU, my standard sort of PC I'd be using for video editing and things, I wouldn't want, really want to be out of the, uh, well, really the mid 60s, to be honest, and ideally below that and idling in the sort of 20s or 30s. Anyway, this test is going to take a while to run, so I'll drop out of real time and then we'll see the result. And there we are, it has finished. It'll tell us all about the test, but what we want to know is the temperature. So I'll go VCGen CMD and measure temp. And it tells us the pi is now at 64.5 degrees centigrade, having run that test only once. It's clearly getting a lot warmer. Now, what I'm gonna do now, you're probably way ahead of me, is to go back to the script we had before, 
but you'll see by the magic of filmmaking, I've actually altered the script a little bit now. So rather than playing a video as the actual task between the temperature measurements, we're going to run Sysbench exactly as I did there, except as previously, I've actually put on the end the code to suppress the console output. So this should give us a nice set of readings, six readings of temperature with that running in between. So I'll go back over here. The Pi is probably quaking in its poor little virtual boots at the thought of this. But if I actually run the command test sh, this will now again run that test without putting anything on the screen. You'll see it had dropped down, what, eight, eight or so degrees centigrade, even in that short time between executing the test and starting it again. But we'll see what set of readings we get as this thing works through. And there we are, it's finished. The Pi can breathe a sigh of relief. And as you can see, the Pi very quickly got very warm. I guess this test wasn't entirely fair. I should have started at idle and, and actually started it nice and, nice and cool rather than having run a test previously. But even so, it would have got to this temperature very, very rapidly. This is a test about the same length as the last one I did running videos, about 10 minutes, and it got up after a few minutes to uh, over 80, and I would suggest it's been throttling itself from that point in time. Remember, it's running here outside of its case. If I touch the processor, even now after the test has finished, this is still pretty warm, and during the test it got very hot. You can sort of have that smell is in the air here of sort of electrical burning, almost. This is not a good temperature for the Pi 3 to be running at. So if you are gonna be stressing your Pi 3 to its maximum in terms of processor utilization, Clearly you wanted to be doing something about cooling it down. So I think it's time now to think about Pi 3s and heat sinks. So, guess what I've got here? It's a tiny little Raspberry Pi heat sink, which I got from my happy friends at a Pi Moroni for the princely sum of a one pound, about one, one dollar forty, something like that. And uh, all you've got to do with this, it's very, very simple, just a little piece of metal, not, not a massively complicated piece of technology. And we're just going to fit this onto our Raspberry Pi by uh, taking off the uh, stuff on the back. This uh, has got some uh, thermal tape, so we'll peel off that there, and we can now fit that onto our uh, eagerly waiting Raspberry Pi, I think. There it is, nice and secure. The Raspberry Pi 3 now has its very own heat sink. That'll make it a uh, very, very excited. I think that's very good. So what we need to do now, of course, is to rerun our CPU temperature tests. So here we are back in Raspberry, and I've run up the terminal again. The Raspberry Pi is all connected up, except this time, as you can see, it's got its heatsink. I wonder what difference it'll make. Well, first of all, let's just take its idle temperature, which is uh, 43 degrees centigrade. It's made Pretty much no difference whatsoever having a, a heat sink on at idle, which suggests if you're just doing very simple things on the Pi, it doesn't matter. But now let's run our more complicated uh, test. Remember this one we ran a few uh, minutes ago, at least in video time, and see what that will do to the Pi with the heat sink. So if we just do that, uh, test SH, and off it goes, and we'll see how this runs. Again, I'll let this run through, not in real time, and we'll look at the final results. But once again, the Pi is racing on doing this stuff already at 100% processor utilization. And uh, there we are. And as you can see, our lovely little heatsink has made a, a bit of difference. It's certainly warmed up a little bit slower. We didn't hit the uh, 82 point something, but we still got to uh, 80.6. We've dropped a, a few degrees off at the end of a 10 minute test. So really, I think what I've learned from this is that uh, the Raspberry Pi, if you're going to run it really at full pelt, you really should be putting a uh, fan on your CPU. A small heat sink like we've got here is, is useful. It will take the temperature down. It'll protect the Pi a little bit. And this, of course, remember, is not in a case. A Raspberry Pi in a case doing anything intensive clearly needs a heat sink, and ideally not just passive heat sinks, but also some kind of fan. Under most normal usage situations, including things like playing back media files, there's no danger of a Raspberry Pi 3 overheating. 
However, as we've seen in this video, if you really stress out the processor, it can get very hot indeed, and so much so that fitting it with a small passive heatsink doesn't really solve the problem. In a future video, I may therefore try some active cooling on a Raspberry Pi 3, and if you want to see me do that, please leave me a comment to that effect down in the comments section. But now that's it for another video, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.